SpaceX Starlink rival, Russians all laser internet from space. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me. I don't have tea today, but hopefully you do, or maybe some coffee, hanging out as we talk about space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI, all kinds of great tech. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Russians <laughs> and their, let's call it look-alike or copycat or clone of SpaceX Starlink. Now, this one is a little bit interesting, all right? It's very similar to a story that I did a few months back about the Chinese and what they were coming up with. And I wanna get into that a little bit with you today. I saw a bunch of articles about this. I wanna bring it to your attention so you know exactly what's going on because this is very big. I'm telling you, the SpaceX Starlink has been massive since day one and uh, the Russians and the Chinese and all the rest of the folks, they know it. It's just, it's there's no way to deny it. So they are trying to do something on their own. Is it possible? That's really the question. And what can they do and what can't they do with the means or the resources that they currently have? That's what we're gonna get into today. So before we get into the article, then I give you my commentary. Then of course, at the end, I wanna hear from you down below in the comment area. I wanna say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. If you don't, throw it a thumbs down. YouTube loves it either which way. I don't know why. I always thought that it used to be like only thumbs up. No, it doesn't really matter. It's really strange. Anyways, if you enjoy it, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. If you have, thank you. I appreciate that. Click the notification button over here so when I go live or when new videos come out, you'll be notified of it immediately. So YouTube says, but they don't do it. But let's make believe they do. Make sure you click all. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on the channel, there's a little thanks button down there. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Also, if you haven't went over to my website, go check it out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash shop. Take a look at some of the merch. If there is something there you like, please pick it up, help support me and my family. And finally, when you're done watching this video, not now, click over here. Not now, click here. I put together a playlist of about 560 videos just for you about SpaceX Starlink and all of the how-tos and tips and tricks and what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it because as I always say, this channel is about the why, not just the how, but the why. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump right into this article. And then once again, I'll give you my commentary and then I wanna hear from you down below. If you don't wanna put something down there, I'm okay with that. Because you're shy or something, put an emoji, put a poop emoji, put a rocket, I don't know, anything. Put something down there. I would appreciate that. Russia wants its own SpaceX Starlink. Russia is racing to build a low earth orbiting satellite internet system that looks a lot like SpaceX Starlink. The plan, led by Roscosmos and aerospace firm Bureau 1440, calls for thousands of satellites circulating around Earth to beam high speed internet back down. Officials admit the country fell behind, but says they are now moving, quote, at a rapid pace to catch up. That's always good. Copying the playbook, but with a twist. Like SpaceX Starlink, Russia's constellation will use laser links between satellites. But here's the twist. They're also promising to use lasers for connecting to the ground. That's the ground station. So from satellite to ground station, from ground station back up instead of RF or radio waves. On paper, that means faster and more secure data. In practice, that is a much harder technology to get working consistently, especially in bad weather. That is 100% the case. Shooting higher into space. SpaceX places most of its Starlink satellites around 350 to 550 kilometers above Earth. Russia's plan is different. They want theirs at about 800 kilometers. That higher orbit means each satellite can cover more territory below, which reduces how many they need. But there's a trade-off. Yes, there is. Slightly lower internet response time and weaker signals since data has to travel farther. That is absolutely the case. Remember, the higher you go, the higher the latency and also the slower the speeds. And if you're going to be using lasers, well, the greater the distance is problematic also. And I'll get into that before the end of this video. Big promises on paper. 
Russian officials are aiming for around 2,600 satellites by mid-2030s, with testing to begin in 2027. They claim home users could see download speeds of up to 1 gigabit per second, fast enough for streaming multiple 4K videos at once. Those speeds sound impressive, but they require advanced ground antennas and satellite hardware, both of which are tough to build under current sanctions. Can Russia really pull this off? This is where the story gets tricky. Sanctions block Russia from importing the specialized electronics and optics that make these systems work. Even if they can manufacture satellites, running a ground network requires international spectrum agreements, launch capacity, and ground stations. Without those, the project could struggle to get off the ground, literally. Why it matters to the rest of the world. The war in Ukraine proved just how valuable SpaceX Starlink has become on the battlefield and in remote areas. For Russia, building its own version is about more than rural internet. It's about national security and global prestige. If successful, this system could give them independence from Western technology and another tool for projecting power in space. The bottom line. Russia's satellite internet dream is bold, expensive, and filled with technical hurdles. They are copying much of SpaceX's playbook while trying to one-up them with higher orbits and all-laser connections. Whether that's genius or overreach is still an open question. That is absolutely the case. So, you know, there's a lot to this story that is true and some is just like a little bit off. And that's what I want to get into here. Remember I was telling you how lasers have problems the further they get, right? I talked to you guys about this a while ago when we were talking about Mars and getting a laser to communicate with Earth from Mars to Earth and Earth to Mars back and forth. And I said, listen, the problem with that is, is even though laser is point source light, if you don't know what that is, look it up. Even though lasers is point source light, you think that it would stay very fine, very, very tight, very small, but it doesn't, it dissipates over time or over distance. So something that is coming out of a laser device that is maybe, let's say, one millimeter. By the time it gets miles and miles and miles down the road, it might be two or three or 10 millimeters. A laser from Mars to Earth would literally be the size of a football field by the time it got here. You basically couldn't capture the signal anymore. You kind of get it? So as you get these satellites higher and higher and higher, it's harder and harder and harder for those lasers to hit the ground and then come back up. And as they stated here in this article, weather is a big thing, and it is. Even though weather is an issue for RF or radio frequency, as we can see with definite rain fade with SpaceX Starlink's dish, well, with lasers, it's even worse. With lasers, if there's a ton of particles, let's say in the air, water molecules, they act as refractors and reflectors and mirrors, and the signal gets all washed out. It turns into a mess, a hot mess. So lasers really don't work really well going through storms. It just simply doesn't. The signal basically just falls apart. The other thing is with RF, for example, if something was to fly in front of the capture device, let's say your dish, it might be obstructed for those split seconds and that's it. The difference between that is you might get slower speeds during that obstruction because you're still getting some radio frequency, some RF, whereas with laser light, it's binary. It's ones and zeros. It's on or off. It's not kind of sort of, there's nothing gray, it's either black or white. So if the laser's going like this and you put a block in front of the laser, guess what? All data stops instantly until that blockade goes by and now all of a sudden it's connected again. You follow me? So there's a lot of positives to lasers and a lot of negatives. Now in space, they're very positive and the reason being is you have laser light traveling at the speed of light through the vacuum of space. So it's even faster than through a fiber optic cable terrestrially on the ground. So laser light, laser connections is awesome in space, but coming down to earth is where it starts getting to be problematic. Now they were talking about them not being able to get products from the Western side, right? Because of blockades, because of sanctions and all the rest of stuff. 
Russia really doesn't give a crap, to be completely honest with you. Because when you see this, when I read this, it literally reads word for word as what the Chinese are doing. I reported on this months ago. I told you guys, I said, listen, the Chinese have been working on this all laser communication that's very similar to SpaceX Starlink. Well, this is the exact damn thing. I mean, literally, the Chinese actually even had mobile ground stations. So instead of having a ground station in one spot, they had it mobile so that if there was weather coming into that area, they would be able to move it somewhere else and still receive the signal. <laughs> okay, this is the kind of stuff that they were doing or trying to do. So when I read this, it sounds more like they're not taking a page out of the playbook of Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink, but out of China and what they have been working on. It's literally the same damn thing. But they don't talk about that in this article, which is really weird to me. So I dug into this a little bit deeper. So I want to know, like, how much is this going to cost Russia? Well, everything that I see comes up with this number of like five billion dollars. I'm like, what the hell? You're going to put twenty six hundred satellites on orbit at five billion. That's just kind of nonsense. So this is going to be expensive. All right. It's not five billion dollars. It's going to be a hell of a lot more than that. Also, I did find out that they did do testing on this already and they were able to transmit 200 gigabytes of data at 10 gigabits. 10 gigabits, not one gigabit, 10 gigabits. That is fast as hell, guys. But remember, that has to be pristine environmental conditions. No water in the sky. I mean, literally pristine, right? If not, you're going to get a lot of CRC errors, a lot of errors. Remember, this is because the light is being dispersed because of the water molecules in the air. If it is pristine, you're not going to have that. You're going to end up having a really tight, once again, point source type of light that has a ton of data in it because lasers can move a ton of data very quickly at the speed of light. But once again, atmospheric conditions play a major role. But still, 10 gigabit. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty damn fast. Now, can SpaceX Starlink using RF produce a 10 gigabit connection? I think it could be possible. Um, I know that they can do single gigabit without a problem. 10 gigabit, I don't know. But that's something to, let's say, be seen down the road. The other thing that I found interesting here is that Russia is saying that they're going to be able to have 97% of all households in Russia with high-speed internet using this system um, before the end of 2030. That's pretty damn good. And then everybody by like 2036, the entire country, doesn't matter where you're located in the country. So that's pretty good. The thing is, is can they actually do it? I think they can. And the reason they can is because they don't care about the sanctions and the sanctions aren't going to hurt them. Why? Because this is not a SpaceX Starlink replica. It's not a clone of SpaceX Starlink. It's a clone of what the Chinese are doing. It's the same damn thing. And I guarantee you the hardware that is being used is the same hardware that they're using in China. So remember, the Chinese have already done this. They have the tech. They have already proven that it works. So Russia is not going to have to worry about the sanctions. Like I said, they're going to be getting all of this tech from China. They're not going to say that. They're going to say it's an indigenous development of some kind, but we know they're piggybacking off China's research. It's 100% the case. And the supply chain is going to fast track them to getting on board with similar capabilities of China as of right now. So they have the ability to launch satellites without a problem. The Russians do. I mean, hell, we were taking Uber rides with the Russians just to get to the ISS when certain presidents shut down NASA, basically, our space program. Remember that? Don't forget that. Don't ever forget that. All right. So, yes, I think, in my personal opinion, the influence here is going to be 100 percent Chinese. It's not going to be like a carbon copy or a copycat of SpaceX Starlink. It's just simply not. Once again, Starlink is sitting at about 350 kilometers to 550 kilometers, where this is going to be at like 800 kilometers. And that's why they're able to do only 2600 and still be able to have enough capacity OK, because they don't need it because they're further away. Like I said before, the further away you go between the ground station and the satellite when using lasers, 
you're adding a lot of possibility for failure. Anything goes in front of it, there's gonna be a failure. Water molecules in the air, failures, thunderstorms, anything that's going on in the atmosphere can cause major problems. Also, solar flares, there's a lot that can happen when it comes to relying on lasers that are coming from space down to Earth. So, we'll see what ends up happening with this. But I wanted to bring this to your attention because moving forward, we're gonna start hearing a lot more of this. We started hearing about the Chinese working on this last year, and they're moving forward with it. Now we see Russia doing the exact same thing. Once again, it's the same exact tech. They're just going to change the name. That's it. That's my personal opinion. What say you? What do you think? Down below, I would like to hear from you. Is this something that you'd be interested in if Russians gave you internet for free? <laughs> I asked the same question when China was coming up with this SpaceX Starlink alternative. I said, hey, if the Chinese were to give you the connection for free, would you take it? Some people said, yeah. Others said, oh my God, no. <laughs> oh man, but you're using TikTok, right? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe, do all those things. And finally, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.